Hello everyone from Motion VFX and welcome to the Matrix. As you just seen, this tutorial will be dedicated to the new M Matrix pack. It is available for Final Cut Pro and DaVinci Resolve and it is free. In this video, we'll see how to get inside the Matrix with DaVinci Resolve. To start, I'm in the edit page as M Matrix is optimized for this page. And I've got a couple of clips inside the timeline. To get access to the M Matrix content, you just have to open the FX library. M Matrix Pack provides 20 tools and effects with 5 transitions, 5 titles, 6 effects, fonts, LUTs, and 1 background element. To display all the content at once, click on Toolbox and inside the search field type M Matrix. By skimming the thumbnails, you will be able to preview all the effects in context. This is the background element, and I would like to use it to switch between the Motion VFX logo to the Matrix universe. I will just drag and drop it over my clip. By default, you will get a very cool transition, but as always with Motion VFX plugins, you will be able to customize it. To do so, you just have to open the inspector, and you will get access to all the parameters. First, you can enable or disable the in and out animations. You can decide in which direction the flow will go, up or down. I can test the up direction. Okay, I will keep the direction down. Below you will find various sections with dedicated parameters, like the color of the digits, you can modify it. To reset any parameters, you just have to double click on the parameter's name. You can also modify the scale of the digit and the angle. You can also adjust the speed of the flow. Here I will reduce just a little bit. And you can bring back more digits on screen with the background opacity parameter. Just below, you will have access to the glow controls, so you will be able to adjust the spread, the threshold, and the vertical and horizontal ratio of the blur. Below, you can adjust the background color and the opacity. You can also adjust the opacity of the highlights area and modify the position. That's nice, but the cool thing is that you can mix the background with titles to get a nice overall effect. Let's copy the background element by pressing the Ctrl key and drag the clip. On the copy, I will disable the in and out animations. And I will drag the title number one over it. M Matrix provides two dedicated fonts to get great titles. It has also a great distortion animation in and out. But in this case, I won't use the animations, so I will disable them. First, I will reduce just a little bit the global scale of the title. Then, inside the title controls, I will modify the text. I will type M Matrix. Concerning the subtitle, there is a very cool in and out animation as the subtitle is revealing with random numbers. The first M of M matrix should be smaller. In DaVinci Resolve, you can't have multiple size of letters in the same text. So to do it, I will simply copy the title by pressing the Ctrl key again and drag it just over my title. On the copy, I will keep only the first M, and on the original, I will remove it. On the copy, I will remove the subtitle just by unchecking the subtitle parameter. I will adjust the size and the position of the first M. OK, I'm good. Let's adjust the length of the three elements. And as I would like to add a transition between the previous clip and these three elements, I will group them with a compound clip. I will name it Title. I will trim the beginning of the compound clip to get enough content for the transition. I will add the transition number three, as it will create a crash zoom effect inside the matrix. If I select the transition, I can change the duration of the transitions, the alignment, but also you have access to the digit controls and the transition controls. So you can completely customize the transitions to get it unique. You can disable the zoom blur effect. 
the flash effect, the glow colors, and many more parameters. At the end of the compound clip, the switch to the next clip is cut, as I've disabled the animations out. As compound clips are non-destructive, I can easily go back inside the compound clip by right-clicking and select Open in Timeline. I will enable the animation out of the three elements. I can even readjust the timing of the title in order to get the title out before the background layer. Like this. In DaVinci Resolve, timeline tabs are very useful with carbon clips, so don't hesitate to activate them here. The next clip is very warm. I would like to get it more green. With M-Matrix, you will get three exclusive LUTs to help you to get a matrix look. To get access to the M-Matrix LUTs, you will have to switch to the color page and open the LUTs library. Inside, you will find the default LUTs from DaVinci Resolve, but also LUTs from Motion VFX. Motion VFX provides many packs of LUTs. Some are free, like M-Matrix. So you will have the Morpheus LUT. You can preview it by skimming the thumbnail. There are also the Neo and Trinity LUTs. I will add the Morpheus LUT by double-clicking on it. Inside the node view, we can see that the LUT is applied. This is a start. Of course, depending on your clip, you can use DaVinci Resolve Color Tools to create your own look. Here, I will increase the luminance value and increase the green tint. When I come back to the edit page, the color grading is available directly inside the edit. Okay, so now I would like to convert the street view to the matrix binary world. To do so, I will use the blade tool by pressing the B key. So I can work on the second part of the clip for the matrix effect. I would like to apply the effect number 4. If I apply directly the effect on the clip, it seems to work fine. But unfortunately, DaVinci Resolve doesn't manage very well the fusion animations. So you can see that we don't have the in and out animations of the effect. There is an easy fix to correct this. I will remove the effect. I will select the clip and ask DaVinci Resolve to create a carbon clip of this clip. I will name it Street. And now if I apply the effect on the carbon clip, you will see that the in and out animation will be there. Now I can quickly adjust some parameters to get more details. I will invert the direction of the flow and I will disable the animation out. For the next shot, I will add the lower third title. The number one has a very cool in and out animation. I will reduce the size and to modify the position, I will use the Fusion Overlay option inside the viewer to directly adjust the position manually. I will duplicate the title by pressing the Ctrl key and modify the text. Concerning the clip below, I will use the same technique as the previous clip. First, I will cut the clip with a blade tool, then I will create a carbon clip. And I will apply the effect number 2. This effect will create the matrix effect by using the edge detection. I will adjust the parameters from the input correction controls to create a nice animation. First, I will adjust the gamma and the lift parameters. And now, by playing with the gain value, I can simulate a 3D scan of the street. I will just add keyframes to get the animation. I will adjust the size of the digit to fine-tune the effect. And I will adjust the length of the compound clip, and we are good. For the next clip, I would like to invert the motion so the young Morpheus will look more badass. So I will do a right click and select Retime Controls. And with the drop down menu, I will select Reverse Segment. 
looks much better. Now I will create a carbon clip and apply the effect number one. This effect generates vertical flow of digits and the digits will be displaced by the content of the video clip. So it is creating interaction with the video content, like a projection mapping. In the inspector, you can adjust many parameters for the displacement and the digits. To get a sweet transition between the two clips, I will add the transition number 4. It will smooth the switch with the second shot. Next, on this shot, I will add a LUT. So I will switch to the color page. This time I will apply the Neo LUT. I will come back to the edit page and create a cop-on clip to apply the effect number 5. This effect will duplicate the layers 3 times and merge them together. By using the Fusion Overlay parameter, you can modify the position of the center of the effect directly inside the viewer. For the three duplicated layers, you can adjust the opacity individually. To complete this effect, I will add a second effect over it. Effect number three will add some interlace and distortion effects. For the last clip, I will add the effect number 6. It will create a ripple distortion effect. I will place the center in the middle of the iris of the eye. I will also add the effect number 3 for the tint and the interlace effect. Between the last two clips, I will add the transition number 5. This one adds some glitch effect. And to conclude, I will finish with the title. I will use a background element. Then, like we did at the beginning, I will add over it a title. This time, I will add the title number 2. I will modify the title and the subtitle, and we are done. A matrix is a pack available for both DaVinci Resolve and Final Cut Pro, and as mentioned, it's totally free. So if you want to enter the matrix with your edit, don't hesitate and enter in our store at motionvfx.com. Thanks for watching. Ciao ciao. Bye bye.